Hello friends, the year 2022 is almost drawing to a close and what a year it has been. Almost every month this year has seen sharp moves led by geopolitical and macro uncertainty. While the global equity and bond markets are in deep red this calendar year to date, Indian markets continue to stage a very strong relative performance. In November, Nifty 50 gained for the second month in a row to touch lifetime highs aided by surge of foreign flows as lower than expected inflation in the US led to hope that inflation as well as interest rates in US would have peaked for now and Fed would pivot sometime next year. We believe that next year global growth would continue to be challenging and if global GDP grows at around 2.1% in 2023, it would be the eighth weakest year in terms of growth in the last 55 years. The bulk of the slowdown would be led by US and China. In US, the real estate has started to see significant decline in the new home sales due to very sharp increase in the mortgage rates. Though the labor market in US continues to be tight, incrementally the tech sector layoffs have started off, which could weigh on the overall hiring sentiments across corporates. We have also seen supply chain issues easing off with freight rates back to pre-COVID levels. Also, secondhand car prices and fertilizer prices have fallen sharply over the last few months, giving hope that inflation might have peaked in US. Investors are now expecting the US Federal Reserve to pivot somewhere in the second half of calendar year 2023, which means that it will change its tight monetary policy stance, which is currently focused on containing inflation. Coming back to India, friends, the Nifty 50 and Sensex also gained more than 3% each in the month of November, even as the performance of broader market was relatively subdued. It's very important that we talk about the second quarter earnings season, which has just gone by. And there were some important conclusions which we wanted to discuss with all of you. First, on the headline basis, the NSE 500 companies delivered 3% earnings degrowth in the second quarter, FY23. BFSI sector was the star performer, which delivered very strong earnings growth. However, if we remove the BSFSI companies and look at the 318 non-BFSI profitable companies in NSE 500 universe, they delivered 26% earnings degrowth. And this was mostly led by metals, cement, oil and gas, and pharma. The other important point was that the NSE 500 companies after two and a half years, saw cash flow contraction led by working capital deterioration. Don't forget, friends, cash flows are important, and our experience suggests cash flow leads earnings. And 60% of BSE 200 companies saw deterioration in working capital. This is one of the important points to keep in mind as we move ahead. EBITDA margins also came in at an eight quarter low, mostly led by increase in commodity prices. Nifty over the last two quarters, which is the first quarter and the second quarter of FY23, has roughly seen about 4.5% downgrade to consensus FY23 earnings, mostly led by global sectors such as metals, oil and gas, IT. Upgrades were seen in financials and auto. It was a picture-perfect quarter for banks, led by strong NIMs, decade best asset quality, and high credit growth. We'll have to watch how long this purple patch will last. Overall, it was a subdued quarter in terms of earnings and cash flows for corporate India. And after a long time, after a strong earnings growth, we have seen some deacceleration in earnings for the NSE 500 companies. While we have a positive view on the Indian equities from a medium term perspective, the valuations at current levels after the recent run up warrant some caution as there could be limited headroom for substantial gains from here on in the short term. Markets are susceptible to heightened volatility amid global recession fears in the early part of 2023 and falling Nifty's recent outperformance over most developed markets and emerging markets. At the same time, FPI flows could add to this volatility. Amid this environment, a portfolio with a good mix of large caps to hedge the volatility risk and secular earnings growth stories across mid and small caps should be the right approach. As equity markets, returns are typically slave of earnings growth over the medium to long term. A bottom-up portfolio strategy 
with focus on companies with leadership, low leverage, high cash flows, growth surprises, and reasonable valuations would be the ideal strategy for a superior risk adjusted return in 2023. Any correction in the market friends or the fall in prices can be used as an opportunity for you all to increase your exposures to equities at a reasonable valuation, while they continue to remain disciplined in terms of asset allocation with a focus on long-term goals. So this was the update for the month of December and our outlook going forward. Wish you all the best and happy investing, friends. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.